Hey folks, Chris from Drift Outfitters here, and today we're going to be tying the pheasant tail nymph. Now, if I had a choice of one nymph to fish anywhere in the world for trout, this would probably be it, uh, along with maybe a hare's ear, they would have to duke it out. Um, but really hard to beat this fly, you can tie it with or without a bead head. Today we're going to tie the more basic beadless version. This is a great fly, rivers, lakes, uh, imitates a range of different aquatic insects, and just flat out produces fish. So to jump into it here, we're going to start out with, uh, this is just a standard nymph hook. This is a Mustad S82, very standard served nymph hook, uh, tied on a barbless hook, whatever you like. Uh, this is a fairly long shank hook. I find it, it does look a little better with a longer shank uh, over a shorter one, but you can mix it up to your liking. This is a size 12. You can tie this anywhere from a size uh, as big as maybe an eight or six all the way down to in, into the 20s. For a thread, this is a Tanot Vivas in a black. And I'm just going to start this thread up just shy of the eye and carry my thread down the shank all the way down to in line with about the barb. Around about there, I'll come in and just cut off the excess thread. And for the tail of this fly, we're going to be using a natural pheasant tail. And you'll see this, as the name would suggest, pops up again and again in this fly. For the tail, we're just going to use a few fibers, call it on a size 12, maybe four or five fibers. I'm just going to pull those off of the stem here, like so. I'm going to measure them out to be about the same length as the, uh, the body of the fly here. Place them off the back. Catch them in like so. I'm just going to carry my thread up to around the midpoint here. Taking those pheasant tail fibers with it. And the objective here is really just to create a nice even body so I don't get any lumps and bumps. Come in, snip that off. Now for the rib of this fly, we're going to be using a small copper wire Take a length, a few inches long, and just catch it in on the side here. And again, I'll take my thread back, tying this in the full length of the body, just to keep a nice even body, nice even proportion. And for the body, we're again going to be using our trusty pheasant tail here. I'm going to take off a similar size clump, a few fibers, a pinch here, rip those off the stem. This time, I'm just going to catch them in barely by the tips. Let's place those on top. Make even sort of pull them in so that you're using the full length of these fibers. I'll take my thread up to just a little ways past the halfway mark here. Grab my pheasant tail fibers now. I'm going to wrap them in the opposite direction of my thread. Use ha you can use hackle pliers for this if you like. It can be a little tricky to keep a grip on these if you aren't used to it. I'm just trying here to make nice edge to edge wraps, covering up my thread wraps. When you get to the short ends, you can use the rotary function of your vise here to help you out if you want. And when I get to about that halfway mark, I'll just come over with my thread, cross those off to secure them. Come in, snip off the ends. And the reason that we counter wrap these fibers here is that now when I reach for my wire, I start wrapping in the same direction as my thread. The fibers and the copper wire are crisscrossed, which helps reinforce the fibers and stop fish's teeth from breaking them off. I'll make about four evenly spaced wraps up over that pheasant tail, and then just throw a couple lashes of thread over top of that. And instead of cutting off this wire, what I can do is just wind it slowly until it breaks off for me. I'll save your scissors for another day. I'll take my thread just up to the eye now, and you guessed it, we're going back to our pheasant tail, and I'm going to peel off another clump maybe just slightly larger than what we have been using. So in this case, call it maybe eight to 10 fibers. Pull that back and off 
like so. Try to keep the tips aligned. I'm going to face this tips toward the eye and measure out a section of those tip fibers to be about half the length of this body, maybe a tiny bit more, just to be safe. Move that up to the eye, come in here, and tie it in right at the eye so that they face over top of the eye now. I'll take my thread back, catching these butt ends of the pheasant tail as well, all the way back to around that halfway mark on the shank. And for the thorax on this fly, we're going to be using peacock curl. And you could use dubbing in the place of this peacock easy enough. Um, the original actually was just copper wire for the thorax. Lots of different things you could substitute here, but peacock has a really nice natural iridescence. I think it works very nicely with this fly. So we're gonna take a few fibers. This is just three hurls here. And I'm just going to snip off the front, call it quarter, the front inch or two of these fibers because they're pretty brittle and tricky to work with. So with those snipped off, I'm going to tie in those three strands of peacock curl right up to the eye. I obviously vary this depending on the size of uh, fly that you're using. If you're using a larger hook, maybe a few more. Uh, if you're using small, you know, size 20, maybe just a single strand of peacock could be all that takes. I'm going to take my thread now forward to the eye, stopping where we tied in that pheasant tail to begin with. And I'm going to take this whole bundle of the fibers here, all this peacock, and I'm going to just loosely twist it together. And by twisting it, I form almost like a small chenille. And what this does is it obviously spirals the, the stems um, across one another and sort of reinforces this portion of the body, makes it a little stronger, and also gets these um, pheasant tail fire, or the peacock rather, wrapping in uh, very evenly and gives you a little bit of bulk, which is nice. Take that just up again to that thread, cross it off, and you'll notice I'm tying all of this stuff in behind these little tip ends of pheasant tail here. Once I have that secured, snip off the excess. Now, from here, we're going to employ a little trick to actually create some legs on this fly. And so what we're going to do, we're going to address these uh, tip fibers at the front here. And with my thumb, I'm just going to push them back over top of the fly and sort of work them to splay them evenly on either side of the fly. From there, I'm going to pull them down, hold them down on the sides of the fly and take these butt ends toward the back, and pull them forward in the same pinch to help in that splaying of those fibers like so. Now I'm going to just pull those fibers back so they're out of the way, hold everything in place with my left hand and just make a few wraps of thread over top of the butt ends of pheasant tail that I've folded back, holding everything in place. And now I have a little wing case and legs coming off either side of the fly. From here, pull back. Oops, should have that vise set a little tighter. There we go. Pull back on my pheasant tail fibers here and come right in with the tips of my scissors Cut off as close as I can there. That's where a good pair of scissors really pays off. And then I can tidy up just a little bit with my thread to cover up those loose clipped ends of pheasant tail. And from here, I'll quickly whip finish. You can do this by hand or with a tool. Three or four turns. Seat that nicely down. Snip off the excess. And then you can go ahead and add a little bit of super glue, or in this case, just regular old head cement. Just enough to keep those wraps from coming undone on you. And that is your pheasant tail nymph.